and JD on site with another video for you. So, we've got this Peugeot 3008 on a 2022 plate. Customers advised me to previous accident damage vehicle. I have got the diagnostics there. I've already gone through it and it's measured an inconsistency in the pressures. But if we go into it, we can have a look at the screenshots are taken. So if we go to that there, go to data manager, go to images, and then so we can see this is a live data I took screenshots of here. So you can see there the atmospheric pressure and the intake pressure is actually measured well below the atmospheric pressure, even though it's got a turbo on this car, um, which is odd. But that's what the code is. So there, P2074.62. So I've already expressed to the customer that I've got a potential for an air leak or air intrusion entering the vehicle somewhere. Um, I'm going to pay a particular note to this area here. I don't know if that's visible on camera, but you can see there's a lot of oil evident around this area here. The oil cap's evidently on upside down. And if you come around to this angle here, we can see that the oil cap just plain simply isn't on there at all. I don't know what's going on with it. You can see it. We can see that there it is forced on. What we'll do is see if we can set you up, we can watch, and see if we can remove it. As this would allow air to enter the engine, or escape. <laughs> Who's put that on there? Can, can you see that? You can see the oil's been leaking out of it. You can hear, in fact, let me just stop this one moment before I even do go out. What I want to do is show you here how loud this is and you can hear this straight away one moment let's find the key for the bimmer where's the key is it the zimmer we've got the keys to my bimmer oh i'm at where's she gone we just had her we just had her so one second. me in my van normal one second i'll pause it found the key it was in my pocket so, listen to this. So I had to command it out just so I could listen for our leaks. Listen to this. The car can detect that as well. Let's have a look. So what I'm going to do here is, is with the customer's permission, probably force this oil cap off of there. And yeah. Um, let's have a look sorry just five out of that video anyway so what I'm going to know actually is that I'm going to let you in on this so the fans came on really high speed again you can hear it it sounds like it has but yeah that's just our big old vacuum leak Have a look. Right, so I'm going to see if we can get this cap out of the outboard. And so I've just switched a key on an ignition on engine off for this morning. So don't really want to continue running it. It's already detected that there. I said to you there that I'd show you this. So it was clear there. I'm going to click back into it and see what's logged in it now. And again, we've got the intake pressure regulation inconsistency of signal. So let's have a look. Right, so coming back down there anyway. So I might actually get the cap out. Um, we can see the oils all leaked out around here. So we can see obviously it's got a wet belt system on this car. Can you see the wet belt there? Can you still hear that it's still logging the misfire? Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to get in there. We put our oil cap on. This is how we do it just for all you who keep doing this. We get it in, make sure it's nice and secure. Rips in, oil cap always. This is the front. So we're going to do an oil level check on it. We're then going to check the cords and erase them. I'm actually going to do that now because it's got the fan going off it for that reason. And we're going to see if we've actually just resolved this by putting the cap on right. A bit spurious of this here because this is actually, I don't know, it's 
It looks like a venting pipe because it's supposed to have a pipe on here. Are we missing a point here? There we are, to there, aren't we? Missing a pipe from there to there. Um, so, yeah. Pipe from there to there. We've obviously got the oil cap. We've got wrapped up in one mark end. MGOD here. I'm going to do a final conclusion video here on this car. So, when I got here, I don't know whether you've seen every light was illuminated, I believe, that this dash had. I had 51 faults stored in this 2022 plate. Could I just remind you that it was an accident damaged car? Um, and I haven't repaired it or had anything to do with it. It's my first time seeing it. But anyway, it had 51 faults stored in it. Um, the engine was running like a bag of shit. The fan was on high speed. It was inconsistency in the pressure regulation of the engine or something like that. Um, I'll just tell you exactly what the engine said because they took it out of it. So the engine said... The engine said... I don't know... The engine said the intake pressure regulation inconsistency of signal um, and that was causing the coolant fan to be sent on for the engine immediately as soon as the engine was switched off even if you raised it switch engine back on it did go so it, it kind of signaled it wasn't a wire but it did come back again um, so and then we went into the diagnostics and I went around there did a visual inspection I could see the oil leaking from the oil cap the oil cap wasn't placed on the vehicle right at all we've rectified that situation now by placing the oil cap on it's actually that quiet I wasn't I thought the car was actually currently off um, but yeah she's back running we've got no I can't trigger it I managed to get the cap in right always goes on facing the front of the vehicle um, the other 51 faults in there with the customer saying they weren't that the information that they were basically that it's been accident damaged i just kind of looked quickly into them they were all mainly logged as intermittent so i'll show you through them now so this is the list here so it starts here and moves up and every one of these is an individual code you can see the modules that have responded to it there um as we go up through each an individual code here you can see there um we had absolutely everything from the airbags fault um can supply voltage everything in there logged as you can see oil level information level two low right oil level information level two low right that's something there that i'm going to switch our engine off now i'm going to leave it settle for five minutes i'm going to continue this with just key on engine off because i have resolved it but i'm a bit scrupulous of the oil i have actually checked it and it was sweet so what i think's happened here is the customer's had low oil He's put some oil in the car and he's jammed the cap on the wrong way. He might have been on the side of a motorway, we shan't judge. We don't know what's happened. Um, but these, we continue on to go through them. So we obviously had collision risk alert, function alert and impact detected. Um, all of these here. So we've managed to take them out now. So the ongoing faults with this vehicle and now what's listed here. And these are the only ones I can induce. Da -da 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 -da. So we've got uh, wiper ECU, voltage too low, secure configuration. So what we're going to do is, I'll do you a quick little live scan on here while we're doing it. The car is now nice and quiet. I did check the oil and it was definitely measuring up on the dipstick. Um, although what I want to do is advise the customer to allow the car to settle overnight because it is hot now. And then check it again, just to be certain of that because you have a funny feeling that would stem for this. Um, I am scrupulous, I do, and I, if I was to hazard a guess, I would say, that, I mean, surely there must be meant to be a pipe on here, but I could be wrong. It feels like there's something in there, can we see, can we see, can we see? Down a light on it, the battery's still low. And I think it should be going down to that there, if I was to hazard a guess. Um, we're going to go through and read it anyway, because I'm just about going to conclude this, as I haven't managed to induce the fault to come back since I fixed the oil cap, which means it's home time if I'm done. Um, I'm going to get this to scan through everything here. Diagnose, auto scan. This is the Autel MP808 BT, for anyone wondering. Um, for some reason as well, once I start doing 
the diagnostics from these and all the screens start flickering. Um, as you can see there, my main important things here are that we obviously get some light to come up as we're doing diagnostics, and that's to let us know what modules we're accessing and stuff. If I just show you this here, if it might have been caught in some of the previous videos, obviously we've got doors open, we've got a service light, we've got the collision prevention. I can't, can't put my uh, thing on that. That could be something. It might just be because we're not driving fast enough or something. I'm not really sure. Um, but if you look into this here, we're getting all pings off all the modules. They're all coming back as good at this point. We even had, I think we even had the airbag module up at the top there somewhere. Pass no fault. Um, so yeah, this is, I, I hope to think that the customer's going to think this is money well spent. Why is that light not on there? It's odd. But yeah, that is that. Um, and we shall go through it all and keep it right. Da -da 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 -da. So we've got the service light and the collision prevention light. I think that's seatbelt warning. I'm pretty sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I could be wrong. It might be for the seatbelt on that side. It's for something. But we haven't got anything relating to any seatbelts or anything coming up on here. Well, we'll see how it goes through. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause it and show you again once it has completed doing it. Um, oh, there's a seatbelt gone off. The seatbelt only has gone off. It was just been as we were reading the memory. Um, so now we're left with just a service light and our collision prevention systems. What I'm going to do is I'm going to shut the bonnet. I'll just be two moments. So it's just wrapped up here on that there. Um, I haven't shut the bonnet yet as I'm going to show you. So that's what we've got final left. It's the same three as what we had last time. Um, what I'm going to do is we've got an adaptive cruise control fault. That's going to be in relation to the calibration of the something in there maybe it might be down to the front wiper issue not really sure not really sure what it is um that's not what the call out was for we've got the engine issues the engine is now running sweet i can feel it what we'll do as well is we'll run in the engine ecu just while we're here we'll see that our uh, charge pressure now we're achieving a higher charge pressure than what the atmospheric value is so we have the intake circuits so if we look for pressure reference yeah so as we look into that there not really sure that to me appears down a lot but I could be wrong um, sometimes the computers measure them in weird ways. What I'm going to do is just look into it a little bit more, but we definitely seem to have resolved the issue. What we're going to do is go back into the code. So we can't seem to induce this code again. That's right. Um, it all seems to be related to the oil cap. So if we come back out, I'll show you the equipment we never had to use today. I was going to jack her up and have a look at the intercooler and all the pipes. Look for an air leak, but it was too obvious. We obviously have the voltmeter, the test light, the battery tester. And it all comes down to the oil cap. Like, subscribe and get in touch if you would like some more content or if this has helped you at all. Thank you.